Hello and welcome, I'm your code Mackey. In case you don't know, I also make YouTube shorts. This is honestly a really great format for me to be able to give out bite-sized advice on all kinds of different topics. There's many things that I can say to hopefully teach you something that doesn't actually require a full 10-20 minute video. So here let's see my top 10 best Unity quick tips. Do you know that Unity gives out completely free assets every single week? This is something they've been doing for quite a while, but a lot of people still don't know. If you go on the asset store every week, you can find the publisher of the week sale. This one has 50% off on assets from one specific publisher, and one of those is going to be completely free. You just set it to your card and then use a specific coupon code at checkout. And when you do, the price goes down completely to zero. Like I said, these happen every single week. This one is about a very interesting galaxy shader. Previously, they gave away a really cool UI pack. Before that, they actually gave away Gaia, which is a massive tool, and this was given completely for free. They also gave away a Dots Utilities package, and tons more stuff. So yeah, this is really awesome. I love that Unity is doing this. Like I said, they change every single week, and if you want to make sure you never miss them, I always write about them in my weekly Game Dev Report newsletter. So what is the best game engine? Is it Unreal? Is it Unity? Is it Godot? Is it something else? Honestly, for me, this question never really made much sense. All of these are absolutely excellent, you cannot go wrong with any of these. All of these engines are capable of building pretty much any game you can imagine. For example, Deep Rock Galactic, this was made with Unreal. The recent Mega Hit Schedule 1, this one was made with Unity. Dome Keeper is another excellent game, this one was made with Godot. And even something like Malatro, this was made with an engine called Left2D that a lot of people don't even know exists. This is a free open source engine. It actually uses Lua, which you probably wouldn't think is the best language for game development. But again, Malatro is an excellent game and was made with that engine with that language. So basically my point is how engines are really just tools, any one of these are great, any one of these can help you make whatever game you want. The limitation is never the engine, it is always up to the developer. Any of these engines can make any game you can think of. Nowadays game developers are really blessed with having so many possibilities. Back in the 90s if you wanted to make a game you had to pay a ton of money to get some custom game engine, whereas nowadays all of these game engines, all of these are awesome and all of them are completely free. So there is no best game engine. If you want my specific practical advice, just pick one of these. If you don't know how to pick, just throw a coin, do whatever, it doesn't matter. Just pick one of them and then really learn that engine. Having deep knowledge of one specific tool is going to be a lot more valuable than jumping back and forth between a dozen different engines. Is 2D easier than 3D? So this is a question that I get every once in a while, and it's a very valid question, it's a very interesting question. And if you asked me this 10 years ago, I would probably say 2D is probably easier, just because drawing a single sprite is much easier, much less work than drawing a 3D mesh, where remember, you gotta draw the 3D mesh, you gotta set up the UVs, you gotta draw the textures, then you probably have to do some complex 3D bone animations. So in terms of workload, 3D is generally more work than just 2D, where you just draw something flat. However, nowadays you also have access, for example, to the Unity Asset Store, where you can probably find 3D models for pretty much literally anything you want, whatever you want to make, whether it be medieval, fantasy, sci-fi, military, it doesn't really matter, you can find assets for it. And in 3D, it's actually easier to basically pick up characters, pick up objects from some kind of pack and combine it with another pack, as long as, of course, they share the same style. So if they're all low poly or they're all realistic, chances are you can mix and match from multiple packs. Whereas if you go for something 2D, you will still find tons and tons of awesome 2D assets, but at the same time, those will be a little bit tricky in order to make them mix and match without looking like they look very far apart. So nowadays, thanks to the asset store, thanks to the awesome tools that exist, I would say 3D is probably easier. In fact, that is why I've made 9 games on Steam, and yet my only 3D game was my very last game, Dinky Gardens. It's just because only the past few years that I learned how to properly use the asset store, and because of that, I managed to build this game, even though I have zero 3D modeling skills. I did not make any of these 3D models, I just bought a ton of packs, I made sure they all fit together, and the end result is I think the game looks pretty nice, especially considering how I have absolutely zero art skills. So if you're like me, if you're mainly a programmer, then nowadays, thanks to assets, I think 3D might actually be easier than 2D. And in terms of logic itself, it's all relatively similar, it's really just whether you have 3 axes or 2, so in terms of the logic on the code, it doesn't really change too much. Quick question, how much is your time worth? This is the actual answer to the question, should you buy or should you build? Right now, the Unity Asset Store is having a summer sale, so there's tons of assets on discount. And anytime I mention assets, there's only someone who makes a comment kind of like this. So something like 50 bucks for some asset, that is way too much. Which again, goes back to the original question, how much is your time worth? For example, here is my own asset, the CodeMonkey Toolkit. This one is a collection of tools and elements helping it make games better and faster. It contains a ton of tools useful in many different scenarios. And right now on the summer sale, it is only 36 bucks. So again, back to the question, how much is your time worth to decide between buy versus build? Let's just look at one system like the interaction system. So could you build something like this? If you're at least an intermediate programmer, then chances are you can build something like this. But then of course, how much time and how much is your time worth? You can maybe build a system like this in something like 10 hours. So considering how the entire toolkit is worth 36 bucks, as long as you get paid more than 360 an hour, if so, then the answer to this question is very simple, just buy instead of build. And of course, in this particular case, this is just one tool out of 40. In order to build all 40 tools, it would probably take like 300 hours. So at that point, as long as you get paid more than 30 cents an hour, then buying becomes a much better option. This is really how I think about assets of any kind. 
The question between buy and build is always dependent on how much your time is worth, and as long as your time is worth a decent amount, chances are it's much cheaper to buy the asset as opposed to just build it. Here's my top 5 must-have assets. These are assets that are super useful no matter what game you're working on, no matter the genre, no matter the camera, no matter the platform, these will always be very useful for every single game. First we've got Hot Reload. This one basically lets you edit code at runtime, save the changes and gets compiled automatically. So you can be playing your game and you can continue playing your game. The changes are applied so you never have to exit play mode. This is insanely useful for iterating upon your projects. Then you've got Feel. This is a really awesome tool for helping you polish your games. You can make the exact same scene look very boring and make it super awesome. Since every game needs polishing, then this tool is useful for every single game. The Text Animator is super awesome for making your text look quite a bit more interesting. And since pretty much every single game is going to have text, this one is going to be super useful. Then the Asset Inventory. This is an excellent tool for helping you find assets. So you can search through a giant library of assets and find exactly what you're looking for and only that. So especially if you have lots of assets, this little library tool, this one is insanely useful. The only one sprite shader, this one helps you polish pretty much any sprite in your game. So those can be game sprites, or even if you have a fully 3D game, if so, your UI is still going to be of 2D sprites. So even on 3 m you can make your UI look really awesome. This tool is super easy to use, you can add all kinds of effects and make something that looks simple, make it really awesome. And finally, as a bonus, I have my own CodeMonkey Toolkit. Obviously, I'm biased, but the reason why I've made this is because these tools have generally been very useful to me as I've made my over 9 Steam games. This contains a giant collection of tools, some of them are specific to some specific games, but a lot of them are very generic, they work on pretty much any game, and they will help save you hundreds of hours. So yeah, these are my top 5 must-have assets. Check them out at cmonkey.co slash top 5 assets. So which Unity version should you use? There are basically three separate types. You've got pre-release versions, you've got support versions, and you've got long-term support. Thankfully, how you choose them is very simple. The pre-release versions, these ones are basically on the bleeding edge of Unity. These are alpha and betas, these are potentially unstable, so for these you pretty much should only use them if you want to intentionally participate in the Unity beta program. Then you've got the support versions, so these ones are safe and stable to use. These basically have the same level of support as the LTS versions. These include some new features and updates relative to the latest LTS. So for these, you can definitely use them in production. Right now that's version 6.1, so if you are starting a game right now, it is perfectly safe to use this version. And finally, you've got the LTS or long-term support versions. So these have the maximum stability, they've been extensively tested, and they receive bug fixes for over two years. These also, you can use them in production, and right now this is Unity 6. So how you choose it is very simple. The simple answer is use the latest LTS or support version. Either one of those is going to be perfectly fine. If you're literally about to release your game like in one to two weeks, if so, then just stick with the LTS, just stick with whatever version you're using. But if you're more than two weeks away from release, I would say use the latest support version. And if you're curious about the naming scheme, this is how it's set up. So the first big part, this one defines the major version. Then we've got the minor version, so 6.1, 6.2, and so on. And the final one, these final numbers and letters, this basically is the hotfix version. You've got alpha, beta, and final. And when it comes to upgrading from hotfix versions, you've got no issues. So feel free to update from hotfix version 7 to hotfix version 10 or something. Those are never going to cause issues. Upgrading the minor version, that one might cause some slight issues. So I only recommend you do those if either you want to test out the better version, to always do a backup before that. And of course, upgrading the major version, that one might cause some breaking changes, so always make a backup. But thankfully in recent years, Unity versions have been very stable. But thankfully in recent years, the upgrades have not been very difficult. Just a while ago, I upgraded the project from version 22 to version 6, and everything worked fine. Did you know that you can vote on the future of Unity? You can go to unity.com roadmap, and here you've got a website basically the entire Unity roadmap. You can cycle through all of this, this one has literally an insane amount of stuff. And over here, you can see all the things that have already been released. For example, in 2D, they made the 2D A sprite important. Then you can see the things that are currently planned. So for example, they're planning on implementing 2D physics low level API. And you can see the things that are under consideration. For example, they're thinking of potentially making some kind of crowd system. You can see everything here on the roadmap for all of these various categories. And then importantly is how on each of them you can actually vote. For example, I'm a big fan of ECS for all. I can't wait for Unity 7 for this to be implemented. So I can go ahead and click on this. And over here, I can scroll down and say how this feature is important to me. Let's say this is critical. I really want this to exist. So here I can write, I think this will be super awesome. Paste in my email address and then just submit my vote. So you go ahead and vote in Unity Roadmap. Make your voice heard on what the engine should become in the future. The new Unity AI Assistant is an awesome tool. This one over here is a chatbot, but it's actually so much more than that. First of all, it's how it was trained on the entire Unity documentation, so it is much better at answering Unity-specific questions than other chatbots. And even more importantly, it has context of your entire project. So as you ask it questions, you get some very good answers that are Unity-specific, and importantly, actually project-specific. I think this is a really excellent learning tool. For example, you can download the complete project file for something like my free 10-hour course. You can open that project in Unity 6.2 and ask it pretty much any questions you want. 
Since it has context of the entire project, it is going to give you some very good, very accurate answers. I think this really is an excellent tool to help assist you as you're following along with pretty much any tutorial or any course. You can ask some very specific questions and get some very specific answers. To use the assistant, just install the latest Unity 6.2 beta and you'll see the new AI menu. Check out my detailed YouTube tutorial for more on these tools. All right, so I hope you found these shorts with bite-sized advice useful in your own learning journey. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.